Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to a special LinkedIn Live. Uh, so my name is Brian Galicia. I lead our global Dynamics 65 business here at Microsoft. But actually, I'm not going to be talking about Microsoft today. I'm actually super excited to be uh, announcing the book that I co-authored with an amazing author named Melanie. And so before we get started, I want to give everyone just a quick uh, kind of orientation on LinkedIn Live. And it's a special moment because one, we're launching uh, this co-authored book, but I'm also hosting my co-author on a LinkedIn Live for her very first LinkedIn Live. She's never done this before. And so, I love as, we go, yeah, so as we go through this, uh, it's going to be an amazing experience because it's really going to showcase the things that we talk about in our book. And LinkedIn Live, uh, especially for sellers, looking at ways to scale the message and connect with your buyers, we're actually showing a real example of how that's possible. So with that being said, before I uh, give introduction to Melanie and start the show, let me give everyone a quick orientation of uh, how, like, what are we going to do in the next 30 minutes? So first and foremost, we appreciate you watching this live. I do know that we have uh, quite a number of people, either they're connected with me, connected with Melanie, or people who just uncovered this because they're like, oh, this is, a, this is, is an interesting topic and they want to join. So we would appreciate and love to know where you're watching from. So if you're uh, watching this or you're uh, like for where Melanie is in uh, the Netherlands or here for me, I'm in Seattle, Washington, the West Coast of the United States, or maybe you're in Asia or anywhere in between. If you just want to put a comment in the LinkedIn window to say where you're watching from, we'll do a quick shout out for everyone watching. Um, the second is that if you have a question, uh, because we're going to go through uh, various things about the journey of the book. Uh, what are some of the things that you'll learn from it for those of you who are interested? Uh, it is free. So I do want to shout out. We're going to do that uh, throughout it. It is free for this week digitally. So you definitely want to take advantage of that. Um, but if you do want a physical copy, you can actually order a physical copy in many uh, countries and markets, including Europe, Asia, and in the United States. So without further ado, gosh, Melanie, welcome to the show. Um, we'd love to kind of start with your background because of course um when 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 i reached out to you back in uh gosh 2018 and we'll talk about this journey you have an amazing background because not only do you own your you you own your own business but you've written many books particularly around linkedin so maybe you could start with your background who you are and then what's one thing not on your LinkedIn profile that you're open to sharing to this broad audience listening today? <laughs> yeah, fantastic. So I kind of started my journey uh, in the whole social media space by accident. Uh, and that was way back in, yeah, before 20, before 20, uh, 2010. Uh, I had been using it for a few years prior to that, very, differently, <laughs> very guardedly, um, wasn't really interested in having people that didn't know me uh, be a part of my network and was just very um, closed in terms of how I was using social media. And then I discovered the business opportunity in it and I was like, ah, this is really interesting. Okay, so um, let me dive into that. And once I discovered that, I certainly moved over to LinkedIn. I was like, okay, well, this just makes so much more sense. You can play on Facebook if you want, or you can create business on LinkedIn. And so I very quickly gravitated to, to LinkedIn as a business platform, um, started learning everything about it. Businesses started coming to me all the time, asking me for their help. And I was like, oh, okay, I should maybe start a business around this. And that's kind of how it happened. And Brian, you and I connected in 2018 when I wrote the first edition for uh, LinkedIn Unlocked. And it was, I remember exactly the comment that you had sent to me saying, you know, your book was great. Um, but it was, I can't remember, well, actually, I don't remember exactly what you said. Your book was great, but it'd be great to have one that's specifically for sales professionals. That's right. And you're absolutely right. Uh, you were actually one of two people that made that comment to me. Somebody else said, oh, yeah, but this wasn't specifically for sales professionals. I'm like, yeah, it wasn't written specifically for sales professionals. But we definitely do need a book about that. And you and I have uh, uh, kind of been on this journey for a long time, not so seriously for the first couple of years. And then it's been a much longer journey than it normally takes me to write a book. <laughs> I've written many books in much shorter period of times. Um, but, uh, you know, all the delays that we had and all the different obstacles that were thrown their way were absolutely perfect. 
because LinkedIn has changed so much over the course of the last year from changing their algorithm to different features being rolled out both in the LinkedIn version and Sales Navigator, uh, and then of course the introduction of AI. So the timing could not be more perfect. I'm so grateful now for the various delays that we had along the way to have this as a you know, really, really um, current best practices of what's working today on LinkedIn and on Sales Navigator. I love it, Melody. Wow, I mean, it is quite a journey. And I think uh, all in between, you can imagine when we uh, started the dialogue in 2018, what happened in uh, late 2019 to uh, about a year ago, we had a pandemic. <laughs> so it was one of those things that it really gave us an opportunity for both of us to kind of reflect, but also all this innovation to your point about LinkedIn and now with Generative AI and all the things that LinkedIn is incorporating. It was a great opportunity for us to really take some of those new things that were coming out and even like LinkedIn creator mode and things like that that were introduced that gave us the opportunity to really maximize the latest innovation and so they can add value. Um, so let me do a quick shout out because we have a number of people watching live and we truly, truly appreciate you celebrating with uh, Melanie and I because this is a big milestone. I mean, Melanie's first LinkedIn Live, this is my first, first book. Um, one of the things that I really wanted to do uh, when I reached out to Melanie was with my bucket list. Um, I really wanted to be a, a, a published author um, just in the way to share value. And it gave me a ton of ideas uh, to work with someone who's done it before and on this journey. So let me uh, do a shout out. So Richard, thank you so much for watching from the UK. Hey. Uh, appreciate that. Yeah, so my, Melanie might know you. It seems like uh, you, you might know each other. Uh, Chip, thank you for watching from uh, Newport, Rhode Island. So on the East Coast of the United States. Uh, we have uh, a local person, uh, Papuja. Thank you so much for watching from Seattle, my neck of the woods. And we have another one, uh, uh, Sushi. Oh, hopefully I'm pronouncing your, your name correctly. So, Samantha, so that's actually where I'm from. Uh, or I where I'm that's from. where you're from because I just typed in your address the other day to Amazon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's my neck of the woods because this is actually in the same uh, city that I am, a suburb, suburb of Seattle. Uh, it's funny. This shows up as anonymous. This is actually my spouse. <laughs> So she's watching this from somewhere in our house because uh, she's, of course, my family. Yeah, so thank you, yeah, Lisa. So thank you so much because uh, I could not have done it alone uh, without people support, like Sam and Melanie. Like there's a number of people that we cannot thank enough for the journey and, and for helping support writing this book. Uh, and it's great. So Richard, thank you. He's already gotten both copies, digital copies on Kindle. So the one thing I will say, Richard, and anyone who do, does grab a digital copy or physical copy, we love your feedback. So please give us uh, engagement. If you want to write us uh, a feedback on the Amazon feedback loop, we'd love that too, because that's that's also, thank you, uh, that's also hugely important for us because we, if you found value, we want other people to discover that value. And everyone knows how algorithms work. The more feedback we get, the more elevated the book will become. And we definitely want to have that happen. Uh, Michael, who I know, thank you so much. I truly appreciate the support. Uh, this was a uh, former CEO of, uh, of an ISV that I know super well. So thanks, Michael, for joining. Uh, more people from the UK. So Giant, uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name correctly, uh, from Reading uh, in the UK. Uh, good enough to see another familiar face, Peter. Uh, this was a uh, Microsoft Dynamics colleague. So thank you for watching from uh, Sweden. And we have one more, Sven, um, from Germany. So it's good to see such a global audience listening to this uh, live or eventually replay to kind of hear about the journey. So you talked about a little bit, Melanie, about the journey of writing the book, um, because, of course, we, we did this because we really wanted to focus the conversation around the sales profession and sellers, no matter if you're working for a big company like Microsoft or a smaller company, if you're trying to sell to buyers and add that value, this book is written for you. So maybe Melanie, you can talk about who we help, who do we help uh, support in driving the value in when you read it? Maybe you can touch upon some of the key points of who we're trying to really provide value to for this. Uh, yeah. for this so this book was really written for anybody responsible for sales and business development and more specifically for people that are using Sales Navigator. So we've gone really deep into Sales Navigator, um, not only the functionality of it, because most people that are using Sales Navigator already know the functionality, although 
LinkedIn is currently, you know, always uh, adding some new additional functionality. For example, so many times as uh, Brian and I were going through the book, we were going through chapter by chapter. And by the way, he would wake up super early in the morning to have conversations with me. And we'd be going through everything over and over again. Okay, did anything change? Let's look at screenshots. Let's change constantly throughout this process. Things were changing. Um, so it was great though that we were able to capture all that at the very end. Um, it would have been terrible if we published it and they started changing things a week later, which <laughs> can certainly happen. Um, but yeah, it, very specifically to sales professionals and more specifically to those who are, are selling to you know any size company, but we really went deep on those that are selling to larger companies, mid to large size companies and buying committees and, and looking at all the different ways in, multiple ways in. So Brian, you should really uh, add to that because that's your area of expertise. Yeah, so I would say, and thanks, Melanie. I, I would say that it really provides a foundation of a couple things. One is before we even get to Sales Navigator, one of the things that Melanie and I stress is how do you show up initially? And the thing about your LinkedIn profile, and some people overlook that, and we can't stress enough. And we're going to go into a little bit more about favorite sections and some of the topics we really talk about. But one of the first things that we cover at the very beginning of the book is you have to be, um, and I can't remember if we use this term, but the, the term I always like to use, you want to be a resource, not a resume. And the critical thing is you want to make sure that when a buyer is looking at your profile, it's not about the accolades. And again, it's hard for me because I'm a sales leader and a seller uh, very historically for my entire career. And sometimes we as sellers, we like to boast about what we're good at or what we've done. And that's good if you're looking for another job. It's not so good if you're trying to attract buyers to have a conversation with you because they don't want to be sold to. They want to be educated. They want to be able to go drive that. So one of the things you'll find very early in the book is the reinforcement of what should be the ideal buyer profile so you can drive those conversations so people can get attracted to. We'll have a conversation with you. Then to Melanie's point, we really emphasize many things about Sales Navigator. And I think the critical thing that I, we want to share is that this is not an endorsement to go out and buy a sales navigator. Um, I want to say that. I mean, there's a lot of value in it. There's a lot of things you can do as a seller, even if you did not have sales navigator. So those are things we try to incorporate in the book so that we assume that sales professionals use LinkedIn. And that's first and foremost. If you're not using LinkedIn very heavily as a sales professional, that's why the book uh, gives you some of that detail. Then it gives you, we go into a lot more detail about navigating and using, if you have a paid version of Sales Navigator, we talk about certain capabilities that can really help to drive better selling outcomes, particularly if you work at a company that has the full on experience that has like the premium, premium edition of Sales Navigator to unlock so many things, including integration that you as a seller don't have control over. But if your organization has integrated your sales navigator with a CRM solution like Dynamics, we talk about some of those things that you can leverage to get even more value out of that conversation. So anyway, I appreciate that, Melanie, because there's, the, the book is such a fantastic way to frame up how sellers can take a journey and take all these best practices from what you and I have done in our journeys together, because we have different backgrounds. But our focus is really to provide value for a seller to really have that conversation with potential buyers. Um, yeah, and you know, Brian, I just want to add to that. Um, you know, one of the things that you were talking about is, you know, sellers are proud of their accomplishments and their sales awards and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, if you at any point in time are looking for another job, feel free to put those back into your profile. You know, your profile is a, uh, a fluid um, thing. So if you're actually using it for prospecting, you're reaching out to, to potential buyers, you don't want to have that kind of information in there because it's going to turn them off. They know if they accept your connection request, what's coming next. So um, removing some of that stuff is, is going to serve you in the prospecting uh, realm. But if you're not happy in the company that you're in, then certainly, and you're looking for a job or you're you know, wanting to, to possibly be headhunted, then go ahead and put those things in. Just understand that when you're prospecting, it's going to limit uh, the acceptance requests, uh, the acceptance rate that you're going to get from your connection requests. So, you know, look at LinkedIn uh, on any given day, moment, period of time as in what is your goal and objective right now? 
and understand that that goal and objective can change based on your personal circumstances. Yeah, I, I, what a great add to Melanie. And that's a good segue into some of the sections and the chapters. And so maybe we can go through together on the journey and the topics we cover. And we, 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 we kind of uh, talk about it a little bit, but we bucketed out there are, I think, I believe 10 chapters um, yes. that go through many different things. So maybe you can highlight uh, each of the chapters or maybe some of your favorites. And what are some of the outcomes that people reading either digital or physical copy can expect and then we'll cover off which 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 are some of your favorite ones your favorite areas that you worked on together to go drive that value to uh people reading the book yeah you know the book is really um systematic in terms of you know where we start and how we go and we go through it so for example uh you know in chapter two it's really about understanding the ideal language uh, that you're going to use to attract your ideal buyer, that is going to go into your profile, which is in chapter three, and it's going to go into your messages that you're going to send. It's going to go into the content that you create. And by the way, <laughs> AI has made content creation so much easier for sellers these days. Um, and we talk about that a little bit in the book. We don't go super, super deep in that because it's a big topic. Um, but one of the things that I added into the book uh, kind of last moment was the way to edit AI content because AI content, I don't know about you guys, but I can spot it a mile away and it's becoming extremely generic. So there's ways to use AI to create content and good quality content, but the magic is in the editing. So, um, you know, one of the other things that we talk about in the book, and I think that this is probably one of the most important things outside of having an actionable strategy and action plan that you follow on a consistent basis, which is the most important thing of all, really. Um, but it's having that, um, that strategy of messaging prospects to go from the connection request and the reason that your profile is important is to get those exception uh, connection requests accepted because if they're not accepted, well, social selling stops right there. Uh, and then the cadence to go from, you know, connection requests to booked appointment. One of the things that we're really uh, conveying in the book is we don't say these words, but you got to slow down the sale to speed it up. You know, you got to be able to build some rapport, add some value, uh, establish a little bit of credibility and trust so that people are saying yes to those phone calls. We all know that the hardcore you know, sales pitches or the, the, the sales pitches of any kind right after a connection with us do not work. Uh, and especially if you're targeting um, higher level executives, larger companies, you have to understand these people are inundated on LinkedIn, so you really have to stand out. And so we've given you different strategies on you know, how to structure each of those messages. What is the specific goal? And I think that this is really important. Every single action that you take, whether it's on LinkedIn or Sales Navigator, needs to have a single and specific goal. So for example, each of the messages to go from the connection request to eventually the booked appointment, and for those that don't become booked appointments, a nurturing sequence, each message has only one goal, and it's understanding what is that goal and making sure that nothing in your message extends beyond that goal. Brian, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, no, this is fantastic, Melanie. I, all those things are fantastic. I think uh, I was just uh, uh, reminding myself of all the amazing chapters because we were very intentional about this journey that someone would take in the chapter names because that sets the tone for what is someone going to go learn. And I think you summed it up well about the journey and the one thing i do uh, like when we get to the execution the kind of the part three the last few chapters like chapter eight converting leads into profitable sales acting revenue through act, activate revenue through relationships chapter nine establishing credibility and expertise utilizing impactful content to build trust and authority and of course the last chapter ready made social selling action plan turn sales navigator a revenue engine and you said it so well because there's so many times where it, it, all of us, we're all, I'm guilty of it. When I first started using LinkedIn, how many times would I send a LinkedIn connection request and all of a sudden start to sell to someone? That is one of the things you, we articulate very strongly in the book. So I mean, you can go do that. And if that's working for you, okay, great. I mean, you might have an amazing strategy that goes outside of what we believe and what we found to be useful. 
But what Melanie was articulating is that you really want to build that digital relationship to earn the trust to be able to then have a conversation down the road. Maybe that's sooner or maybe that's later, but you have to build that credibility to allow that person to understand, okay, why do I have, want to have a deeper conversation with you? And then the content, I think Melanie, you said it so well, because there's a lot of, don't get, don't get us wrong. AI is going to be so prevalent in how we do uh, uh, engagement with people. And you have a starting point, but the thing you want to do is have it be your voice. Uh, because as Melanie said, pretty quickly, people can identify when someone writes something, especially if they've gotten to know you over time, they immediately know that did not come from that person. <laughs> because so Brian is actually worse than that. <laughs> so you can spot it so easily by you'll see, you know, uh, language that has harnessing all throughout it, unleashing all mm. throughout it. The moment I see those words now, I'm like, okay. <laughs> I just want to add something, Brian. Um, you know, sure. one of the things that you you vulnerably mentioned there is when you first started out, how you would send a sales pitch right afterwards. And everybody has done that. Everybody's done that. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't know better, right? We had to learn these things along the way. And, you know, one of the things I think is really, really powerful to always remember whether you read the book or not it doesn't matter <laughs> like this you can remember and that is write the way that you would speak if the person was standing in front of you hmm. not one seller would walk up to somebody at an event shake their hand and say hi i'm brian would you like to buy x you <laughs> that's right well do that sellers are so fantastic at verbal communication, they stumble when it comes to written communication because they somehow think it's different, but it's not different. It is exactly the same. And so one of the things that we encourage is to read out loud the messages that you send or even the content that you post. Ask yourself, would you say this if you are standing in front of somebody, and it's kind of the same thing even if you're sharing a post on LinkedIn, because you are saying that to somebody, and you should always be writing a post as though you're speaking to one individual at a time, because that's what you're doing with every single thing that you're, you're sharing. You're speaking to one individual at a time. So just ask yourself, would you say this out loud, standing in front of a person? I, what a great analogy, Melanie, because it, uh, it's we're all in those situations now that uh, we're getting back into a somewhat normal rhythm of meeting people face to face in networking events or uh, informal conversations. And you're such so spot on because the other thing that occurs and we touch on this in the again, the content strategy and how you do things is that sellers, we get excited about when our marketing teams or when we want to share something, what do we do? We share it. And so which is good. But then more often than not, when a potential buyer or someone comes around and they engage in that content, and you've seen it and I've seen it, one of the things that also is a little bit challenging is that the sellers don't engage in that, that conversation or they don't engage in other people's content. They just think, oh, I'm just going to share content and just share content versus finding if you were a buyer and you, I start to pay attention to what you're writing, it's okay to actually for you to engage in that content and have a conversation similar to what you said, Melanie, which is we get into a room and do all of a sudden, is it a one-way conversation? Sometimes it is. And then what happens? It's a turnoff because you're like, okay, I'm going to move on and go somewhere else because it just seems like you just want to talk the whole time versus yeah. having a authentic, hey, I want to get to know you. You want to get to know me. And then you earn the right to have a deeper conversation about other things that may lead into a buying conversation. And so I, I love that. So with five minutes left, maybe are there any other things that you would find that you would love to kind of talk about, like any other favorite sections or uh, pieces before we get to, hey, how do people find the book or take advantage of it? Are there any other components of the book, Melanie, that you really want to highlight and surface up for people listening or uh, either live or for the replay? Yeah, there's several. Um, one I really, really want to focus on is the spotlight creatures. And, you know, if you've set up safe searches on Sales Navigator, if you go into those saved searches and you activate any of those spotlight features, mm -hmm. motion news, uh, posted in the last 30 days, and you resave them, you know, create a new saved search with those spotlight features, those are the people that you should be focusing on. 
the people that there's a natural engagement opportunity, whether they've changed positions, uh, been mentioned in the news, or shared something on LinkedIn, those are the, the you know, so many people struggle with, um, what do I say? How do I spark up a mm -hmm. conversation? Well, sometimes it can be really difficult when people don't do anything on LinkedIn, they share nothing at all. What do you, you, know, you could do some research about their company, which you can and should. Um, but outside of that, it's so much easier when they're they're visible on LinkedIn. Not everybody is. We know that. Not you know, there's a, a small percentage of people that are sharing on LinkedIn. But those that are, they're actively checking into LinkedIn. So why not start there? Start with the you know the, the lowest hanging fruit, if you will. Sometimes could be the most profitable fruit, also. Um, but there's just natural engagement opportunities that are happening all the time. And, you know, don't complicate things. Like there is more than enough of those opportunities that that'll keep you busy without having to, you know, try to figure out what am I going to say to somebody that hasn't posted anything on LinkedIn in five years? Yeah, I love it, Melanie. And that's a good teaser to all the sales navigator goodness, because for those who have used it or want to invest in it, those are some of the teasers that Melanie is referencing because LinkedIn, the free version of LinkedIn offers so many robust capabilities, but if you do have the opportunity to invest in Sales Navigator, you're, we touch upon many of these topics in the book. And another one that I would love to highlight to expand on Melanie's great conversation are things like when you're going into uh, uh, looking for potential buyers and that ideal buyer and the role type you're going after, simple things like did, the, did that person who's now at the company you're trying to sell to, did that person used to work at your company? And it is so amazing. Again, this is maybe uh, very biased to me working at a big, large company like Microsoft is that more often than not that there are people at an organization that used to work at Microsoft because of how big Microsoft is. And so to what you're what you mentioned, Melanie, is that finding commonalities. And I think that's the biggest theme is that you just want to ensure that when you're doing the reach out and very strategic on who you're trying to go after, spend the time to figure out what do we have in common? What is what is something I can reference in the outreach? And we cover this in the book in, in various areas is when you do that reach out, don't make it generic. Don't make it, oh, hey, because we have two people in common, I'd like to connect with you. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Keep in mind. I'm sure Keep you have very good. Uh, oh, over you there. Sorry. No, it's okay. I, I'm sure you have some really Keep in mind that just because you, you share people in common, that that doesn't mean that those people actually know those yes. people. You don't know most of the people within our network. Just to add to what Brian was saying about, you know, he has the luxury of working for a very large company. And so that opportunity with uh, finding somebody that used to work at Microsoft is going to be easier for him than it might be for somebody else, another seller at a large, a smaller company. Um, but another amazing function uh, is the alumni network. So if you've hmm. gone to some uh, college or university, you know, looking up the alumni that are, <clears throat> you know, uh, from the same um, educational institution that you went to, those are really easy people to connect with because they see that in common. So those are also a really, really fantastic place to start. I love it, Melanie. I'm going to do a quick shout out for, for Richard. I love your, your reference here, pitch slapping. <laughs> I think that's a funny, it's a, I mean, it's very, I, 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 I love it. I know it in a joking way, but it is such a, a good call out because you definitely don't want to come across as immediately trying to sell to someone as soon as you make a connection. So we're almost at time, Melanie. So maybe you, we can talk about what's the call to action. Of course, uh, if for those of you who follow either one of us, you've probably seen yesterday, of course, we announced that the book, uh, um, navigating LinkedIn for sales is available. Um, so maybe you can touch upon how do people uncover it, find it. It's free, as I mentioned at the very beginning. The digital copy of it is free for the remainder of the week. So if you want to take advantage of the digital copy, please do so. But maybe you can talk about a little bit, Melanie, uh, kind of call to action and, and next steps for people. Yeah. So, yeah, as Brian said, the, the, the digital version is going to be available to Friday of this week, uh, free in every country that uh, Amazon sells digital books. I uh, have had some people reach out to me that were oh God, two people reach out to me for today from Denmark saying there's no digital books in Denmark. I'm like, can't you get it from Germany or the UK? So I was trying to brainstorm to figure out how they could get a copy. Um, but the book is filled with, you know, so many actionable uh, steps for every aspect of social selling from the foundational ones right to the execution. 
Um, we also created a bonus uh, download that you'll find access to inside of the book with specific action plans, so printable action plans on setups of all the different uh, best practices for setting up Sales Navigator, uh, as well as the action plan of what to implement and execute. One last thing that I forgot to mention that I think is really, really important and fantastic is, you know, we talked about this messaging sequence with the right cadence. Um, Unless you're, you know, inputting that into a CRM, it can be very difficult to know when. So these are where custom lists, lead lists are mm -hmm. really, really important. The moment you add somebody to a lead list, you can see when you added them to that particular lead list. And as you're moving them through this messaging sequence that we recommend, uh, you'll know exactly when to send the next message. So utilize lead lists, uh, make them... You know, you can have multiple lead lists, but definitely for the, the messaging sequence, it's called the link method, and that's in chapter eight, uh, with the goals and objectives of each one. And you'll know exactly when to send the next message. The key to, to really effective social selling is being organized. I love it, Melanie. What a great final comment. And I flashed it up here, and we'll have this running in when we end the show. Um, this is the actual page, and this course, course might look slightly different depending on the country you're in. But as you see there, there is an option for either digital or the paperback, a copy. And of course, the, the, the cost is going to be different by country by country. But you should see, as you see there, you don't have to be part of the Kindle Unlimited. Uh, yeah, that uh, Kindle Unlimited has really confused people. You know, so that Kindle Unlimited at the top, it has nothing to do with it. So if you click the, the buy, and it shouldn't say buy because it's free, um, the, the link below that, that's going to give you the free copy without Kindle Unlimited. That's right. That's right. So. I encourage everybody, again, uh, we would love the support. If you do get a chance this week, uh, take advantage of the free digital copy if it's available in your specific country. You, again, very quickly, we're gonna put at the very, uh, after this call, we'll put kind of various links to the various markets that where we know that there's a digital copy that you can grab. But if you also just wanna go into your local Amazon for your specific country and type in navigating LinkedIn for sales or type in either our names, that will also be able to pop up the actual book. And the one thing, again, that we would love to have is if you do read a copy, we'd love the feedback. Uh, I know we mentioned at the beginning, but we can't uh, thank you enough that taking the time to give us feedback on the, the value it brings will help us tremendously because if you did find value, we want to make sure that that also amplifies so that the book is seen by many more people and the way that you can help us do that. This is by adding uh, feedback in, in the link. Uh, as long as you've read it. We don't want the feedback if you're just assuming something just because you're reading the title, but we love the feedback um, if you've actually read the book and got value out of any specific chapters, maybe all the chapters. So with that being said, Melanie, any last minute comments before we end, end the show? I truly appreciate you as a co-author. Uh, I learned a lot through the process. Uh, it was an amazing journey when we started this and I'm looking forward to the continued conversations we'll have because as more and more people start to read it, we both will start to get more and more people giving us the insight as to what value they're getting. But any last minute comments before we end the show? Yeah, so I'll, I, I didn't answer the question that you had in the very beginning, which was, what is something that I don't have on my LinkedIn profile? And that's why I'm an introvert and don't like live video or videos at all. So I've like shared, I actually, if you guys read the book, it's gonna be funny because you're gonna read the book and you're gonna be like, Melanie says she's never done a LinkedIn live and she doesn't do videos. And here I am uh, doing a LinkedIn Live. Um, but the, the reason I'm bringing this up is if there is anybody that's uncomfortable with videos or any uh, live or LinkedIn Lives or anything like that, you don't need to do it. You know, focus on your strengths. I'm a big mm -hmm. believer that um, we can get a lot more leverage out of focusing on the things that we're good at. And as sellers, you guys are fantastic at speaking. So just apply that to the written word because if you read your message out loud and think, would I say this in front of somebody, you will do a fantastic job. It's what you do best. So don't confuse uh, the spoken word with the written word. And don't think you have to do something like videos or mm -hmm. and, and also don't think that you have to be publishing content on LinkedIn every single day. You don't. Yeah. What a great message, Melanie, because I think all of us uh, as sellers can be all from all parts of life, extrovert, introvert. And I love how your comment, use your strengths. And if there's opportunities to have uh, to expand that. And I love how you took a leap of faith to 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 get on a LinkedIn Live for the first time, just get, get the experience and go do that. 
because now I feel honored the fact that I was hosting you on your very first event and hopefully there'll be future opportunities for you to do the same thing in other, in other venues. But thank well, you, you again, Melanie. Host. I'm sorry. You are a fantastic host. Oh, good. Thank Well, thank you. <laughs> I truly appreciate that. And, uh, and so thank, yeah. So thank you everybody for taking the time to support Melanie and I, we can't thank you enough uh, because I know we have, blending our professional networks together because there are people that I saw commenting in the window. There's people Melanie saw that, that know her super well. So please enjoy the book. Thank you so much for making the time. Please connect with us or follow us and looking forward to hearing your feedback. So thanks again, everybody. Thanks, Melanie. Thank you. Bye.